Hi, I'm Charlie from CookingSecretsForMen.com and we are continuing our series Cooking with Milwaukee Community Leaders and I'm very pleased to have not only a Milwaukee Community Leader but a National Community Leader. This is Congresswoman Glenn Moore. Glenn? So good to be with nice you, Charlie. You. I'm excited. <clears throat> um, so Congresswoman Moore is the, I think, the Dean of Wisconsin uh, Delegation, correct? I am. Um, and uh, one of the things, um, I'm a, um, DC re a long time DC resident, I was born and raised there. Wow. And there's a reason they call August the dog days, um, because it's hot and humid. So I think you've made the right decision to be here in Milwaukee in August, so um, I'm glad to have you here. Um, so uh, we'll talk about your work in Congress in uh, just a little bit, but I want to go over your background and how we got to this point. So um, you were born in Racine, about a half hour down the road here. Born in Racine, literally across the street from Lake Michigan. Then you haven't moved that far because you moved up here to Milwaukee. We're, um, we're raised here in Milwaukee. End up going to North Division High, which is just a couple miles west of here. Um, so talk about your your early years and how they set the stage for your uh, formative years moving on to college. Well, you know, I uh, it was born in 1951 in Racine. We don't have to say ages, do we? <laughs> well, you know, and I'm pretty <laughs> proud to still be here, Charlie. And uh, but so so I was really shaped by the times uh, in which I was was born and raised. Uh, think about it. In 1968, uh, when the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, when Bobby Kennedy was assassinated, uh, I was a junior in high school. Uh, and I was also uh, the president of the student council uh, at North Division High School, a high school, by the way, that Golda Meir uh, attended. You know, I had been active uh, in, in the school setting, and I had been active literally citywide in school activities with trying to get black history mm -hmm. taught in our school system. Such a counterpoint from now. Well, then we were starving for some information about black students because North Division at that time was 99.999% black. We had one white student that we called white folks and forced him to be in everything, you know, on every team, to the homecoming, because he had to represent. And uh, so we really were starving for black history. And we did uh, uh, citywide walkouts, protesting. Uh, um, it was a time when we were marching with Father Grappi and uh, Vail Phillips, mm -hmm. who was a common council member. Uh, and so I grew up at a time when activism was uh, the rule of the day. And, uh, you know, as a 12-year-old, 13-year-old, I was uh, sneaking out um, of the window to go on these marches. Is this in your bio somewhere? You know, I said, there's no tell-all <laughs> okay. here, but, uh, it's, you know, I, I sneaked out. And, and, of course, I remember getting hit in the head on the south side uh, with a no-deposit bottle no deposit bottle uh, as I marched across the 16th Street Bridge with Father Grappi and the commandos and, and others. Um, and so I started out, I mean, we protested. Uh, our class was the one that got North Division High School uh, slated uh, for a new school. Uh, I was, a, it was taking chemistry class and uh, got there the first day and the teacher said, well, we can't do Mr. Fisher. We can't do experiment 5, 7, 12, 13. Well, wait a minute. Why not? Because we don't have the equipment. So I started protesting about that. Um, and, you know, the thing is, is that I wasn't a loud type protester, but I was sort of pushed to the front by my classmates. Um, you know, I ran for student council because I was, you know, kids said, you talk good. We, we want you to, you know, represent us. And so I ran for student council and won. Uh, and um, that was kind of the beginning. So let, let's talk a little bit about your education. Um, but it wasn't really a straight line for you. There was, you had some, talk about the uh, struggles and the journey you had to do to get your degree. 
I honestly, I was uh, looking at a flyer that I saw at a, at a, on the bulletin board at North Division, and it said that, you know, you know, if you want to get an opportunity to go to Marquette University, come to this community-based organization. I went there with a girl named Francine Clark, who ultimately ended up getting a PhD, and I don't know from where. And I, you know, met Dr. Arnold Mitchum, who was trying to recruit students that day, uh, and it, he pursued me because I also uh, found that I was pregnant in my senior year in high school. But I had sort of given up on the dream of going to college, but Dr. Mitchum pursued me, and I started Marquette pregnant and delivered January 1st. Uh, 1970 uh, and then in and out I dropped in and out of school one problem I had was with the welfare system Charlie because uh, then uh, if you were going to college they literally saw that I had monies for tuition books right. full scholarship based on combination of, of, of loans mostly grants mostly grants and they counted that as income and the school went to bat for me, <laughs> explaining that this was not income, right. that this, these were, you know, this was tuition and books. This was a back and forth kind of thing. And finally, I finally got my degree like nine years later. So it's, it, everyone's story is interesting. And it's always um, interesting to listen to how we got from point A to point B to where we are today. So can't do it on your own, folks. That's true. If you, if you don't have family with you, you're in bad shape. So let's let's talk a little bit about uh, your work history um, after college. You were, you worked as a community activist, um, and then you also this is this is kind of funny. Um, you were a volunteer at Vista. So I asked the twenty somethings here, uh, what is Vista? And they I said, unless you're under sixty, you have no idea what Vista is. And, and the, is that Vista print? Is that <laughs> no, so worked? Uh, we're volunteered Vista. It, it, it's now a program under AmeriCorps. It's like the Peace Corps, right? But it was the civilian arm of the Peace Corps, volunteers in service to America. And the purpose of being a Vista was to inspire the community around you, and not to become something that couldn't thrive after you were gone. You wanted to sort of empower the community. And so I had, uh, I, I was on the board of directors of a community-based organization, the Midtown Neighborhood Association, and they applied for a VISTA grant. And they asked me to get off of the board of directors and to become their VISTA to help organize a community development credit union wow. from scratch, which we did. And uh, I can remember Thanksgiving Day, um, of our applying for um, a capitalization loan, a federal capitalization loan of $100,000 to get our credit union started. And it was due by November 30th or something. So Thanksgiving Day, people came over to my house and we had the turkey and the cranberry sauce and everything there as we wrote <laughs> the proposal and put the budget together. Uh, to, to start our community development it, credit union. It was all handwritten at that time, right? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, oh, then we had mimeograph machines. Um, uh, We're really you know, dating with the little, ourselves with the here. carbon paper. Right. Oh, yeah. We had, and, and guess what? You know, no Google, no cutting and pasting. We didn't have that. Oh, no. You had to actually, like, write White your out. mission statement. That's exactly right. You had to actually, like, write it. You couldn't Google uh, or anything. And so we did that right over the dining room table. Food was always in the, in the mix. Absolutely. Food brings people together. Um, so after a lot of work in the community and, and this, uh, you ended up uh, running for the state legislature. You were in the state legislature. And then that rolled into being in the state senate. So talk about I, a little bit I, I, I did. I mean, I you know, I was always interested. You know, I I think now to you know, as we're filming this, that there's a big uh, march on Washington occurring simultaneously that is commemorative of the March for Jobs and Freedom in 1963, 
And John Lewis was the youngest speaker uh, at that event. Um, but he was fighting for public accommodations, for the ability to sit in a restaurant with white folk, to be able to get on a bus, uh, you know, Greyhound bus and not have to sit in the back. I'm about 10 years younger than him. And so my generation, I was very in interested in financial equity because the point at which I organized this community development credit union, I had had an experience with usury loans. I had uh -huh. had, um, uh, I had from like the renta something system gotten a washer and dryer, which I desperately needed. I had three kids. And honestly, paid this thing down to where it would have been mine and a few more payments. All right. And was late or missed the payment. And they swooped in, took advantage of my kids being home, letting them in. Came and repossessed my washer and dryer. So I had a chance to see up front, you know, how it was that there were no banks in our community, just transaction centers, no, you know. And so it really... Organizing this Community Development Credit Union came after I had been involved in community activism with regard, we had an organization called COIN, you know, Community Organizing for Investments on the North Side, you know. Uh, and, and, that could and, be viable today. Right. I'm saying, protesting. I mean, the thing is, is that I grew up at a time when things wasn't right unless yeah. something that was, was wrong and something was always wrong. So... Uh, from the state legislature, from state senate, um, you ended up running for Congress, and you are now a ten-term congresswoman, um, longest-serving. Well, you're the, the dean, so you're the you have the most experience of our Wisconsin delegation. Um, you were the first African American from the state of Wisconsin to be elected to Congress, and the second woman. Um, so, talk about. Uh, some of the stuff that that has been accomplished while you were in Congress, and things you're proud of, and what we can look forward to uh, moving forward. Well, I'll tell you, Charlie. Thanks for asking me that. You know, I think my being elected. You know, you say I was the first African American and the second woman, um, but I always said that I just had no interest in being the first of anything. I, I was. I mostly want to make a difference. But let me say, it has been very consequential that I have been a woman, that I've been an African American. I've had an organizing principle to help the least, the lost, the left out, mm -hmm. uh, and, and operating from that framework in my own lived experience, you know, it has really enabled me to bring millions of dollars of resources back. I want to talk about one constituent that I absolutely adore. Sure. That's Lake Michigan. <laughs> a whole lot of my career has revolved around bringing resources to the sewerage district, bringing resources so that the Army Corps of Engineers can dredge and do things to Lake Michigan uh, so that we can have monies. I've, I've done earmarks to make sure that this fresh, clean water and this resource is preserved as part of the culture right. of growing up in Wisconsin. And so this is something that I'm very proud of. Um, really working toward the Great Lakes restoration, really have worked to get uh, uh, parts of, getting our lake to be considered for pots of money that it previously had not been. We work very diligently on making sure that we take care of everything from tributaries to invasive species. Uh, and I've been very, very involved in crafting parts of our of our um, the legislation, our Inflation Reduction Act uh, in particular, uh, to make sure that those uh, climate provisions will benefit sure. those of us here on the Great Lake. As a woman, I am so proud of the work that I have done um, uh, for women. Make no mistake about it, legislatures, parliaments are male gendered institutions. White Be male. clear. You said, Charlie, uh, uh, well, white. All I got to do is look at any picture of any male centered. Yes. And so I, I just remember going into the Wisconsin legislature, thinking the assembly, thinking, 
boy, I am not going to get stereotyped as a woman here. I'm just not. And that about 10 minutes before I was on my feet, on the floor, protesting something that they were doing <laughs> to harm children and women and to set us back. A lot of my work. I, I, I was the, the leader on the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act in 2013. And I mean, this is an, uh, something that uh, now President Biden, but then Senator Joe Biden put together um, uh, when he was in the United States Senate. What, 1994. And it's something that just got reauthorized every year, kind of like with a yawn. Mm -hmm. It was a suspension bill. So, you know, the fact that I took it over, you know, it was not going to be any different. I was just going to, you know, be there and be the one responsible for shepherding it through and everybody was going to vote for it and everything was going to be okay. Except in my bill, when I was responsible for it, I looked at some of the best practices and recommendations that were being made at the time. And what they were saying is that uh, people who identify as LGBTQ, were having a hard time getting into shelters. Uh, they, they were being discriminated against. That Native women were being raped and violated and beaten nine times what other women were. Well, it's because the laws didn't provide tribal police authorities with the authority to arrest non-Native people for domestic violence. There was no Barney Fife. Dion's having a good time out there in the audience. There is no Barney Fife sheriff with their one bullet that could come there and save you. Right. The, there was no local police and the tribal police. The only ones who would have any authority were uh, with the federal government and those marshals could be 500 miles away. Right. Uh, and so, boy, did we have a hard time getting that. It took us two cycles to fight for that uh, because they brought up uh, uh, various rulings. And essentially, that was, you know, we don't want Indians having the authority over white men. It was like, well, I mean, if you're a white man, maybe you just shouldn't be beating up on Native women. And then this wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> but anyway... I want the tribal police to arrest you. We have 11 nations here. I grew up with Indians. I grew up with the guy now who is the head of the Indian Gaming Association, Ernie Stevens. I mean, I just saw him running around in the streets. I didn't see any reason to leave Native women out there on the table. LGBTQ women. We thought Native people came in People from the LGBTQ people, from the Tibet, this was, we converged on Congress and forced the Violence Against Women Act through. And so I'm really proud uh, of that. And it comes out of my own experience. I mean, I have, I've been a survivor of domestic violence. I, I understand how women get trapped in it. And I mean, here was a legal trap, right. especially for Native American women. What can you do? So, um... The, the RNC is coming here yeah. in July, and you have been working both out in front and behind the scenes in making sure that securing the convention for Milwaukee, and I know you've been trying to get extra security um, uh, money for, for the convention also, so why don't you talk a little bit about that, because that's going to be a, a boon for, uh, for the economy here next year. My, my interest in, in their convention, of course, is that everybody is safe, uh, that everybody has a good time uh, uh, and secure while they're here. Uh, there will be protests, as there, there always are at conventions, and I want to make sure that our fire department, our emergency services, our police department are, are sta stood up mm -hmm. um, to, to meet uh, any kind of challenge so that we can stand up the kinds of security perimeters and security that's worthy of, um, you know, because our, our, you know, we're going to attract a lot of attention around the world yes. and, and we want to be ready. So, so, um, so talk a little bit about your family. Well, the most important thing to me right now is that I'm a great grandmother. As a matter of fact, I just left, I should have brought my great granddaughter with me to see this show. Maybe she'll see it on 
YouTube, huh? I'm but I, 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 I'm really excited <laughs> that uh, that you invited me to a show that's designed to to have men step up a little bit with their food preparation. I have one daughter and two sons, mm -hmm. but I am a great grandmother. My daughter has three daughters, and my and, and um, two of my three granddaughters, two of them. Between them have three daughters, so I have three great granddaughters. I have a queendom, uh, and um, and I'm very very proud of that. But my sons, I think they need to step up a little bit, and so I have two sons. Uh, you know, one son who is, wants to kind of lose weight and try to figure out how to balance that. The other one very oh, interested all. in vegetarianism. <laughs> but I have nieces, nephews, and so I was very excited to have this opportunity to come to you to learn because I I think I want to be able to feed anybody. Well, there you I, go. And I, right feel, place. I feel so sorry for vegetarians when they come, all you serve them are salads. You get a tossed salad or a fruit salad. <laughs> That's, that, is, that is so true. That is, yep, yes. Um, you know, and if you, you know, if you could do dairy, we'll have some cheese and crackers for you. Um, we, we like to call this um, serious people with serious jobs having a little fun. And it's hard to tell if, you know, as, as much fun as we're having here is, you know, I know you're a serious person. I'm serious, but I really want to come. Well, we're having a little fun. I, so, really, I really want to do this. What are, what are we preparing today? Today, we are preparing stuffed green peppers but stuffed with Spanish rice and black beans uh, and with and with uh, uh, Monterey Jack cheese uh, and this is so exciting to me I have I I have rarely cooked green peppers because uh, you know you think that it's hard to do and uh -huh. and, and you know and I kind of didn't remember how to do it. It had been so long right. since I've seen my mom do it, wondering how do you get the green peppers soft without dunking them in boiling water and how to, how to do this in a simple way. Well, I have, I have good news and bad news. Okay. The good news is we are going to be cooking some peppers. The bad news is they're not green. They're multicolor. They're orange, Ooh. yellow, and red. So, yeah! So no green pepper. Well, there, there is one poblano pepper that I that I put off to the side that uh, if your son likes heat, then uh, we can try that one. Very right, we'll, eager to we'll see what a real cook can do with that recipe. I, I don't know. I'll see if we can find one. Um, <laughs> so, um, you brought a friend with you today. I did. Well, this is the person that I got the recipe from. Uh, she is a nutrition... I'm going to let her sit here. Specialist. She works Sharon, with, come on and have a seat. She, Sharon, spelled C-H-E-R-O-N, not the other Sharon. Sharon Copeland. And she uh, is the one that provided me with this tremendous recipe. And it was really good. I mean, at least, like I said, the little bit of it that I got, my son ate most of it. Well, we're, we have the apron for both of you because you're both oh, very yeah. nicely dressed. So we'll put those on. Um, so we, uh, we've done some prep work. We're getting organized back here. I'm going to put some um, right here. And we will be back in just a minute with, uh, uh, I know the congresswoman said she wants to learn from a real chef, but I think, uh, I think Sharon is going to be the sous chef. I may, I may give some uh, feedback, but I think I'm going to be more behind the camera and, and throwing out little questions. And Cover my hair up fun. a little bit. So give us a minute. We'll be right back. All right, we're over here at the stove, and we've got Sharon and the congresswoman, and I'm on the camera, and Dion's behind me taking pictures. So, Sharon, take it away. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with our oil. Just okay. sprinkle a little generous amount in there in the middle. Okay, just in the middle here? Yep. I mean, I got olive oil with olive oil on it. Need more of that. Need more now? Just a yeah. little bit more. All right, that's okay. perfect to start. Okay. Olive oil. So we're going to start with our garlic and our onion here. You'll just Ooh. toss it straight in the pan. Listen, I love it. I love it. I love it. You, you uh, put enough uh, garlic in here. I, I think you used 
I love garlic. I'm, I'm Italian, so we're good. no such thing as too much garlic. I know. And then do I let that cook or put the onion in too? No, go ahead and put the onion in. Okay. Our onion's gonna help us measure how done it is, because once they're golden, then we'll know that it's more cooked and ready to go. Oh, okay. Fellas, those watching, this is really easy. Um, like Sharon said, we're gonna know when this is done by seeing when the onion turns golden brown. Mm -hmm. Ready to add in our tomato paste. Okay, so now we add in tomato paste, not sauce, mm -hmm. tomato paste. Yep. This comes in little, like one ounce cans. Six, six ounce cans. Six ounce cans. And I did this just like this. Alright. And then do this. Yeah, you want to get it. Kind of mix it around a little bit. It'll break down as you, uh, as you heat. Smells good to me. It smells really delicious. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. I think I did it. All right, now that our tomato sauce is done, we want to go ahead and put in our vegetable broth. This is vegetable broth. How much vegetable two broth? Two cups. This is two, two cups. cups. Two cups of vegetable broth. Mmm. So with the cast iron skillet, sometimes it holds heat a lot more. So yeah. if you want to turn it down a little bit, or if anyone watching at home needs to turn it down low a little bit, just to avoid that extra steam coming up, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, we're good. It's between medium and low. We're good. Mm -hmm. We're good. Okay. <laughs> so other than that, it works. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Listen, I'm gonna put some seasoning in here. What's mm -hmm. in here now? So we have. Let's see what we have. Sharon, what do we have? We have some cumin, a little bit of chili powder. We have some black pepper and some thyme. All right. Okay. How do we know if this is enough? You season till the ancestors till you stab. All right, so we're going to put in a little salt also. Okay. In our little salt cellar. Okay. We use a lot of salt in our house. Yeah. If you couldn't tell this from is, that. This is going up good. This is... How much salt is this? This is a, That's about... Yeah, no, half about, a teaspoon full. Sure, sure. We'll go with that. Well... I think I'm going to add some more chili powder. All right. So this is New Mexico red chili powder from uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico, where my son yeah. is. I like it hot. Ooh, there you go. I'm going to stir that in. Boy, I'm having a good time. It's nice to have a nice kitchen, too. Make sure you clean up the kitchen. Yeah, that's one <laughs> of the... Behind yourself. That's, that's one the part the guys don't absolutely. like. Yeah, clean as you go is a good, good way yeah. to cook. Yeah, have some dishwater already made. Um, and you'll, it'll work out. This is really getting thicker. Okay, so now, while this is boiling, Sharon says that I just put the rice right on into yeah. this mixture. That's, uh, Spanish rice. And how, how much rice am I putting in here? Put Ooh, it all. This looks good. But how much is this? Is that is, uh, two, two seven-ounce boxes. Two, two boxes. Okay, I only Fourteen put one, ounces. Why well, only put one box in mine? This is two seven-ounce boxes. All right. I had the other box, but I was too stingy to do it. Look at there. Oh my God! This is this is absorbing it. You're turning it down for me. Thanks, Hold it, yes. Thanks, Jeff. Let's fold it in. Oh, come on, guys. This is a workout for your for your what do you call what do you call these things? Triceps. Triceps. Now I'm gonna put the black beans in. Yeah. How many black beans are in here? This is just That's a one, one big can. can. Yeah. Yeah, one can, and then. You, we washed these off. They were rinsed, correct. We rinsed them to get all the white foamy stuff off of them. And then just fold them in. Mmm. Mmm. So it looks like our rice has really absorbed the water. It's yeah. It's already going in. At this point, if you really want to, you can add a little bit more vegetable broth, but it doesn't look like we need it. It looks very moist. It's, it's very moist and very good. Can I taste it? See if I... Absolutely. Oh, That's what those little enough. spoons are for. All right, I got a little spoon. There you go. I'm going to taste it. Oh my God, it's divine. <laughs> I think she likes it. It's divine. It's perfect. Better than what I made at home. It's delicious, everybody. I'm baking a big one. Of the when I made the rice, um, I used a um, little vegetable stock in there, too. Uh huh. So it was water, and, and so it gave it a little. The rice is very flavorful as it is. 
Now, it's time to stuff it, right? Yeah. All right. I think I'm going to do this like right here. I'm just going to fill these up generously. Look at, oh my. I don't know if I like, if I if I don't need a, a regular tablespoon or something. This I is, have a. Uh, this, here, there's that thing there. That other one. This one? Yeah, we used that already. There we go. Okay. See, yeah. I'm helping. You're, you're helping. Mmm, this looks so good. Gave her a spoon. So we're using multicolored bell peppers. Yeah. Oh, this is fun. All right, well, this is uh, the point at which my great grandchildren would be helping me. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> and the, you get the poblanas. So Those are poblanos. What do you call them? Poblano peppers. They're um, they're little. They're Mexican. Um, they're a little bit spicy. Mm -hmm. um, they um, they become when they dry. There, if you've ever seen these uh, in the grocery store, like uh, yeah. dried black uh, peppers. Those are ancho chili peppers. That's what a, a dried poblano becomes an ancho chili. All right. All right. So, all right. So let's. Who wants to put the cheese on well, let's, top? All right. So um, we have filled the peppers. We've got two poblano peppers here, and then we've got the other ones. So. Uh, Chef Congresswoman, you want to <laughs> drizzle some? Uh, there's the cheese right over there. All right. Pepper Jack, Colby Jack, Mexican, some kind of some kind shredded of cheese. Yeah. It's a it's a four cheese blend, I believe, Mexican yeah. cheese. Oh, and this looks so good. So we've got the oven pretty I'm, much ready to go. What's what's the temperature of the oven? Three fifty. Three fifty. Yes. This is pretty, pretty, pretty. And the last thing we're going to do, and I'll do this, we're going to, this a little cilantro. To put on top. Yeah. I thought about cilantro, but it wasn't on the recipe. I know. Uh, we're okay, it. okay, chef. Anyway. Yeah. All right, so we're going to put these in the oven. They're going for uh, 20, 25 minutes, half hour, depending. We're going to let the cheese melt. The um, Everything inside is cooked, so we just want to get the cheese melted. Um, and then we're going to. And the peppers will get a little, a little softer. They'll get a little softer and a little crispy. So we'll be right back. All right, here we are. So, this is what we made. This is our stuffed peppers. Uh, Sharon, Congresswoman, you want to give a little play-by-play -play on what we got in here? Well, it took 25 minutes to bake, and it just baked up beautifully, I think. All right. And we got cleaned up the kitchen while we were waiting. Yeah. And uh, it just looks, it smells delicious. I can't wait to eat it. All right, well, we're not going to wait anymore then. Well, we, we sneaked and ate a little bit of the stuffing, and now it's the real deal. We, tr we tried a little bit. All right, so let's dig in. Yeah. Napkin in your lap, like your mommy told you. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I have a poblano. I've got a yellow pepper. I believe we've got orange one here, mm. so we're getting all kinds of flavors. Mm. Mm. Them all. So good. That's mm. what I like about the cheese being put on the top, is it makes kind of like a crust. Yeah. And so when you cut into oh. it, it's a whole piece. Yeah, it is nice and crusty. Mm. Delicious. <laughs> and the poblano for me is not super spicy. It's got a little kick, but not not much. Sharon, what do you think? Um, I'm working on it, but I did okay. I did sneak a taste of the rice earlier. Yeah, it was okay. really good. I should go to my purse and get red pepper. Pull my red pepper out. Mm -hmm. Need a little spice. Some like it hot. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. crunchy, it's moist, it, the peppers are cooked perfectly. It's easy to cook. Mm. Very easy to cook, fresh out of the oven too, so everything tastes really fresh. So, well, I'll, I'll wait till you take your bite. Mm. Alright, so, I want to thank you for coming. Thank you so much. It's a, thank you, Charlie. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Great, and thank you, Sharon, for the recipe. And thank you, yes, Sharon. Thank was was the was the sous chef. I did about three things. I think I I put on some cilantro. Mm -hmm. I got a fork, and I'm I'm well, sure you I did prepped something everything. Else. You prepped well. Yeah, that's the a peppers. Lot of, that's a lot of well. Well, we had it was a team effort all the way around. So, but um, you can do it by yourself. Yeah. Absolutely, these will have the recipe up. Um, for you to take a look at, but as always, we appreciate everyone's support. I appreciate both the Congresswoman coming in, um, taking time out of her schedule, Sharon coming um, and helping us 
uh, some good nutritional tips. Um, Dion, Dion, in the audience, he's uh, he's waiting to, for a fork so he can have his pepper. <laughs> so we do appreciate the support. Please like and subscribe. Uh, we have many other videos for uh, cooking with community leaders, and um, we invite you to take a look at those on our website. So, as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.